In this video, we're going to take you through how to create change orders and adjustments. As a part of that, we're going to look at a couple different examples, including uh, looking at how you might refund or change quoted items. Throughout it, we're going to be talking a bit about making sure that we assign change order items to categories when appropriate. And lastly, we'll look quite quickly at the invoicing for change orders. Now, to begin, I'm actually going to start here in the change order section. And I basically want to begin by quickly talking a little bit about the difference here between a change order and an adjustment. Now, they are going to operate pretty much identical. The key difference here, as we'll see shortly when we look at the document, is that the change order will have a section for signatures by both yourself as the builder or trade, as well as the client, whereas the adjustment won't have that section. The idea generally is that the adjustments are primarily orientated in situations where the contract is already outlined that the client has already basically agreeing upon it. So the adjustment is really just documenting that and uh, then allowing you to invoice for it. Whereas the change order potentially may be more appropriate for where the contract isn't uh, stipulating those sorts of situations. And so you really just want the assurity of the signature part. Now, regardless of that, we do very much encourage you to uh, check your contract and then from there, define which one's appropriate. For the examples of this video, I'm going to be running through change order, but just do keep in mind that the process is going to be exactly the same, whether the purpose is for a change or the adjustment. It's really just whether the signature part is there and again, adhering to your contract circumstances. So to begin, we're going to do a couple different examples of how to raise change orders. And the first example here is going to start in the actual costings. Now I've jumped down to my appliance category where you can see I've pre-elected my allowance items. But to be clear, raising a change order, well, oftentimes is done for allowance items. Uh, we don't restrict you uh, from raising a variation to a allowance or non-allowance item. But in this case, I'm just gonna run with allowance item just because generally that's oftentimes what happens. So to begin, I'm gonna raise a change order for this particular item. And in the circumstances, I'm going to go ahead and assume that, look, you know what, I have was we didn't specify exactly which cooktop. We've only just allocated a quantity and a cost. And so now the client has chosen the item. And so we need to do a change order to basically reflect the final selection of the item. So I'll begin by ticking the item on, and I'm going to hit change order for one item at the bottom, and that'll bring me open to this screen. At the top, we're going to start by giving it a description. So I'll just say kitchen change order. Again, I can change it like I mentioned a moment ago if I need to, if it happens, it's an adjustment, but now I'm just going to run with the change order. We can then put a proposed start date in. We can put a delay days. And from here, we can document any details. Now, the key thing here with these three sections is it's really up to you if you want to put content in here and what the nature of that content is. But essentially here, what we're trying to give you the ability to do is really and clearly document the impact that this change order may have on the overall project. So while later down, we're going to look at the actual item selection and the cost. This is really about documenting those impacts to the project so that you have it written down as to potentially how this change order may you know, cause further delays or potentially some negative impacts to the project and expected timelines. At the bottom here, though, what BuildExact is going to do is it's basically going to bring in the items and the cost. Now, in this example, I hadn't actually recorded any costs against this. If I did, then BuildExact would automatically calculate the variance. But because I haven't spent any money, it's just going to pull it back in and effectively just creates a credit for the item. What I'm going to do now is if the client perhaps was just going to buy their own cooktop and they effectively just wanted to remove this uh, item from the overall contract, then I could leave it there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a new item and effectively do now the, the say, the final selection of the cooktop, um, specify the, the brand, the description, whatever I may need to do. From here on in, it's basically just a mini estimate. So I'll say there's two items, but the new items are going to be, say, $900 each. We also leave it up to you as to how you want to handle the markup. So in this case, I'm going to say 20% and 20% on the way through. As a quick point of clarification as well, it is worth noting that the markup column here will only appear for contract and completion percent jobs. If you're doing a variation for cost plus job, you won't see this markup. And we have a separate resource for you to view in that circuit that talks a little bit about that. So one thing to keep in mind, if you don't see that markup column, it's probably again, because it's a cost plus job. 
The final thing we need to do here is we need to then specify where do we want this new item to go back to in terms of the actual category. And I'm just going to put it back into appliances. And from there, I'm pretty much done. At the top, I'm going to change the status now to sent. I could hit save and share if I want to, where I could then uh, email it and or uh, uh, email it out of Build Exact. And as a part of that, I could then do the standard or the digital acceptance workflow where the client can then basically uh, download that, view it, and also digitally accept. Um, if, however, uh, based on uh, legal jurisdiction or anything like that, you perhaps need a signatory element, then generally you just use the standard one here. What I'm going to do, though, is I am now going to jump over to the change order section. And popping that back open, I hit save and share, whereas I'm going to go ahead and now and just hit save and close because I want to go ahead and hit the little print button now just to take a look at what it looks like. So now we're seeing the change order. This is essentially what it's going to look like. So we're going to start again by branding it with your business details as we do across the system. We'll fill in the client details, the job related details, the name of the change order. And then essentially in here, this is where we're going to go ahead and effectively give in this example. And we're going to credit back them that amount, including the markup. But now we're basically doing the final selection. So effectively what's happening here is the client is going to owe us an additional $911. And we'll see that reflected in the current contract price as well as the proposed contract price. At the bottom, because again, this is a change order, we have then the signatory uh, section here. If this was an adjustment, this wouldn't be uh, this wouldn't be shown. Uh, but again, this is a change order. This has these sections. So essentially here, once the client signs it and everyone's happy, all we're going to do now is we're going to pop it open and we're going to now mark it as accepted. And what that, by marking as accepted, it's going to do two separate things. The first thing, jumping back into the actual costing screen, we'll see two new line items will appear. One that essentially is going to zero that amount out. I might move it up just to reflect that. Yeah, that basically nullifies it out. And then there is the new item. So from here, I could raise a purchase order and go through that process. And we do have videos on purchase ordering if you are curious. The second thing that this is going to do is it's going to then deposit that item into the outgoing invoicing, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But before I get into outgoing invoicing, um, again, I want to go through another example of a change order. And in the second example, perhaps it's a situation where there's an out of scope change order. So essentially put, I'm not going to be, it's not going to be impacting uh, any of the existing items. It's effectively a brand new item that the client is requesting. So in that example, we're going to jump up to the change order section. And I'm going to go ahead and raise a change order here by clicking the add change order button. Now, effectively, it's the same process, but here we're going to go ahead and say, let's say the client asked for a security system. Again, we didn't originally quote it, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. So say security system. Again, filling in the ability to propose start, delay days. But down here, because I didn't select anything from the actual costings, we're going to go ahead and need to put the item in. So I'll say, let's, uh, you know, I've already got this quoted externally to build exact. So I'll say it's going to be $6,000 each. Again, I can go ahead and apply my markup. And again, making sure that I want to go ahead and put this item back into a category. At that stage, the rest of the process is pretty much exactly the same. Again, I can hit save and share, uh, send it directly out of Build Exact, or um, I can mark it as sent, then hit save and close, then from there, print it off, get the client to sign it, and then change the status and so on and so forth. Now, lastly, I want to touch on essentially now how to invoice for the change order. Now, to begin, I'm going to jump to outgoing invoicing section here. And two quick things before I begin. One, uh, we do have a separate video that goes through the uh, outgoing invoicing for the different contract methods. So be it fixed price, completion percent, or cost plus. Um, so just keep that in mind that uh, we do have separate videos that go through that in more detail. But very quickly here, this is going to be a fixed price job. And now to invoice for the, very, for the change orders, rather, I can go ahead and hit the plus button here. And let's say um, you know I had a had an existing invoice coming up where I'm going to claim for a percentage of the contract, so I could do that here. And then with the change order that's been approved, I can then start to either claim a certain dollar amount. So I might say, "Hey, I want to you know I have to pay a deposit, so I want to claim four hundred dollars back." Or potentially, I could look at claiming a percentage of it, or I could claim the whole amount as well too. So this is then allowing me to then invoice for the contract as well as the change order in one combined amount, or 
perhaps I don't want to invoice for a stage payment uh, for a claim of the contract. I just want to invoice for the change order. I can do that as well too. I just leave these zeroed off and then from there uh, put in my change order claims. And then the rest of it uh, basically follows along the outgoing invoice. And again, we do have separate videos that go through that in more detail. And that's how to do a change order.